Brightmore is more than a neighborhood. It is a community. In the 1920s, folks traveled from all over the world to live in Brightmore while they worked at the Ford Motor Plant. The 1960s was booming. The recession in the 1980s brought on some challenges. Throughout the years, a constant factor has been joy, hope, and strength with real stories from real people making a real difference. Today, we talk with community members about the triumphs as well as the challenges that still remain. If I had you to tell me a story, what would it be? So I'll tell you a dark one first, okay? Um, we were about to have a health fair. We've got some modular units down the street and uh, we were coming out a community partner was with me. We stepped into my car, we heard a series of shots. So then I turned to Schoolcraft, and there was a young man standing in the middle of Schoolcraft, shooting into the back of a car. This young man slumped over the steering wheel, gasping for breath. I was starting to feel down, because I had just watched one African-American young man kill another African-American young man. All right, right in front of our community. In the midst of my darkness, the Lord, said to me, that's why you're here. Mm. What if those two young men would have been in your tutoring program? Yeah. Or what if they'd have came here and learned how to play an instrument? Yeah. Or what if we'd have provided her something that would have gave them another avenue to have identity other than a gang? Yeah. All right? And so that's one of the things that I pull strength from, all right? That there is change happening. It's so slow, though. I had visited City Covenant Church one night for a women's event. Mm -hmm. And the lady that introduced me, she began to say at a time in her life when she was having some struggles that her friend that she knew attended City Covenant, where she said, you know what, I don't, I'm not working right now. It's hard for me to even buy food or something. And her friend said, oh no, you won't have to worry about food no more. She said, we're gonna get you some food. And along the way, I've had the opportunity to be involved with the feeding program. I don't know what the world thinks about Brightmore. I've become a better person mm -hmm. because of, of Brightmore. Tell me the stories about um, children who have come in one way and left out another by taking advantage of those services. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the children that come through, number one, for the music program that is offered here is dynamic. It was a gentleman that started the program through University of Michigan, and his idea was to nurture students through. And so when the senior student be got into that position, they would actually be the one that would coordinate everything, mm -hmm. and then they begin to train the other students mm -hmm. that come under them. And you've seen that here? Yeah. A lot of the things that people don't think you can do in the city, like have farms, we have farms, we have an actual sense of community, we have different community organizations. Talk about like some of the challenges that you've seen, how they overcame it. There's a lot of people that have been dislocated or had to leave what they've considered home. So that's kind of sad, especially people that have been here for so long. Something I didn't know, like we have a really high incident of people's water being shut off, mm -hmm. like for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of disheartening. What do you think would help uh, sustain or uh, maybe address some of those challenges? Sometimes it's just a lack of knowledge, a lack of resources. Trust is another thing, being trust. able to trust people when they say, hey, you know, we're gonna help mm -hmm. you out. And not really feeling like they can hold people accountable, mm -hmm. kind of a big thing. Communication, a lot of times, it's like you find out about something, but it's after the fact. Mm -hmm. I think around a lot of residents don't have a sense of trust. I might be able to trust you as my neighbor, mm -hmm. but when it comes to being able to trust city officials. Tell me a story about Brightmore, work that you've done here, or a family that stood out, or a program that you all have offered to families. Black Family Development has comprehensive services and we're excited and proud to serve the community. We just have a brand new project that I'm really excited about called Project Launch and we're going to be doing much more targeted work in Brightmore and I am super excited to be involved in that work. Why it's important to highlight people, um, their strengths, their joy, 
and hope. So BFDI is an organization uh, that values hope and healing. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we're working with families who sometimes have challenges, but those families are also strong and they're resilient. And if we can partner with them and get to know them and have them to trust us, yeah. we can help to build some of those strengths that they need to move forward even yeah. beyond the work with us. And what does that look like? It looks like partnering with families, strengthening them, giving them resources mm -hmm. and those connections and information that sometimes they don't have access to. Our aim as an organization is to service families beyond crisis. What's the thing that you're most passionate about when you think about servicing families? Sometimes families just don't have the same resources or access to services. What really is motivating me is how to bridge the gap. And families all want their children to be successful, yes, they right? Do. They all want yes. that. So how can we be of partnership in that? And one of the things that we're doing now is really trying to not only provide those supports for families, but the early childhood providers in the mm -hmm. community, they can also benefit from connection. What are your hopes and dreams for Brightmoor? So one day I was going into, I was pulling into Grand Rapids for a training or a conference or something, and they got these condos and all this beautiful stuff that you first pull into Grand Rapids. That's what I want. I want people to come off of uh, 96 yes. and swing that corner. And maybe we got tiny homes or maybe we got tall condos or that's what I want. My hopes and dreams would be that the residents of Brightmoor can still feel that Brightmoor is home in the midst of changes that might take place. That we can have the same but improved um, resources as far as schools. More than one would be nice in terms of library updates, in terms of recreation facilities, you know, things like that. Things that you kind of expect a community to have, we expect for Brightmore to have those same things. That all of the children in Brightmore are connected to educational supports behavioral supports, mental health supports. Yes. Their families are connected to well-being resources. We've learned about housing as a really critical need yes. for families. We will be able to assist and so that's what gives me hope. My hopes and dreams for Brightmore is that it's gonna be a place of a miracle and people are gonna wonder and what took them so long wow. to come through Brightmore and to grab all these wonderful minds. There's a lot of stories, there's a lot of talent though. Yeah. yeah. A lot of strength. Yeah, it's a lot of opportunity here. Yeah. <laughs>